Hello, today you are watching the repair video or rather upgrade video for Dell XPS 18 inch portable tablet all in one computer. Um, so, the objective of for today is to transport and putting um, this 256 gigabytes of solid state hard drive and see if we can put it into this uh, all-in-one tablet from Dell. Again, this is the Dell XPS 18. Uh, I believe it's 18.7 inch monitor tablet. So this is the biggest tablet available right now. And one, one problem with it is the, it sometimes comes with the basic model, if the basic model comes with basically a regular spinning hard drive, right? And but it it's being advertised as a tablet. So in order to be a true tablet and portable without actually damaging the spinning hard drive all the time when you use it, you need to put a solid state hard drive in there. But Dell has a very expensive option for the solid state hard drive upgrade, which um it could be a problem if you didn't buy it with the solid state hard drive or the price is not ideal for you because Dell charged such a premium for it. And the purpose of this video is to teach you and show you how you can easily replace it with a solid state hard drive from a third party, in this case Toshiba. Okay, so you can see all these screws. What you want to do with this device, something like this, is you want to check all compartments for any hidden screws before you start the repair. As far as I can tell, there's only uh, 1234, 1234, so there's 10 screws and they are all shaped by um, hexagons, star shaped hexagon. So, oh yeah, so I have a kit here. I bought this from Amazon. Um, you just need to find the correct screw and let's take these 10 screws out first. What I would suggest you to do is to get one of the CyberDark um, magnetic mat. It's like a project mat that's magnetic and you can put it on it. That way you don't lose the screws. Or just find a little tray box I will work to. Yeah. The important thing is don't lose your screws. Because you're going to have to put them back later. Also, when you're screwing, unscrewing these screws, the, make sure you have the right tool and you're matching the groove evenly before you start to torque your screwdriver. This way you won't then permanently damage the screws that you're working on. Okay. This is the, my first time opening XPS. Probably the last time, I'm not expecting to do this again. So I have no idea what's underneath it. So I must say, I don't think anyone done this yet. So that's not really a good way to find out what's underneath and no one on the internet has opened the Dell XPS 18 as far. So, all right, so I removed all the 10 screws. I'm trying to pry, see if this case just pops up on its own without any resistance. So far, I don't really have any luck. I think it has something to do with this. It's a rubber. Probably need a credit card. Okay, another one for credit card. I could sacrifice. I have a little bit of card here. Let's see if this will do the trick. Okay, so one thing I noticed that um, this thing pops open on its own. 
So what happens is you, in order to take this back cover up, you need to put these two on its uh, vertical rotation orientation. This way, um, see this two little latches? These two has to be open, otherwise it won't come off. So once you do that, you open from button up, okay. and then just slightly be careful because there might be wires tangling in there. Let me just check. Alright, so it looks like it looks okay. I don't think there's any wire attached to the back piece cover. And since I'm getting into the interior of this lap, uh, going one tablet, I want to wear some kind of gloves. You always want to make sure whatever device you're working on, it's it's um the battery is off. And you're wearing some kind of, I like I prefer nitride glove, if you're allergic to nitride, you can always wear, always wear latex. But I'm not allergic to either one. Alright, so you also want to ground yourself, there's three ways, to do, three ways that I know you can do this. One, you can attach yourself to a, some kind of metal wire that goes to a ground unit. Um, second way to do this is to touch your grounding unit, For in this case your computer will do it, if your computer is made of solid metal, since your um, computer is uh, the power supply is grounded and the third way would be like I just did uh, wearing gloves but you still want to touch a metal piece to ground yourself even with gloves okay. so the only reason this thing is still on let me try to manually shut it off see if that do it Power button is here, and you just keep holding it and holding it. So that should do it. That shuts it off. Okay, now I want to take the top cover up. There's nothing like you can see in the video. Once you remove the 10 screws and leave these two foot up, upward, there's nothing stopping this back cover from being removed. And once you removed it, uh, let's see what's inside here. So the date here it says 2013, 09, and 18. So this laptop was assembled and manufactured in uh, September 2013. It's kind of funny. This is like a mush over here. I guess they stamped it wrong and then they stamped a new day on. Okay, so. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Okay, so this is just the door for um for the SD card. It's a little door, you don't want to break this, so you want to be careful because the spring looks pretty fragile. Other than that, there's not much to it. This is uh that's it. That's inside the cover. Looks a little bit like the the um owing one unibody MacBooks. Okay, since everything is made in Foxon, I'm assuming, um it pretty much looks like a Mac, the uh, early model of Mac. Foxconn design. I recognize the FPC connector here. Um, it's for often. This connects to, I'm guessing, the touch screen, the digitizer. And there's a lot of pausing here. There's two ginormous battery. They, wait, is it one or two, I think? Let's see, is this the battery? I don't think this is actually... I'm not sure. Maybe there's two, or maybe there's one battery in here. Um, this one says Dell 69 watt hour. Let's see, where does the battery connect to? Okay, it looks like there's two of them. It's pretty big. So the entire thing basically is half weighted by battery. That's impressive. And the hard drive is here, which is where we're gonna get to. Um, I sometimes really don't understand why they would do this. Um, I guess cutting costs. Everything in here looks fantastic. Everything is pretty and you know compact. 
as light as they can be at the price, but somehow they decided to put in a spinning, traditional spinning hard drive um, instead of solid state hard drive. Which make, which is pretty silly because solid state hard drive is really light and it doesn't have the problem of breaking. Can you imagine breaking something like this on your own and then you can fix it? Especially when you're moving, um, moving a laptop all the time because this is advertised as a tablet. They really shouldn't be advertising this as a tablet if they have a spinning hard drive here. Okay, so from the looks of it, I'm removing this tape. This is a piece of plastic. Um, you can pretty much just you can tape it back or however you want to do it. I think I'm just going to leave it alone for now like this. Um, you want to be careful because you can damage this ribbon, especially this a PC connector, once you damage those, um, they will make... So I don't know what they do. They'll pretty much make whatever that this, the digitizer uses, I'm guessing. This is a digitizer. And also it's interesting that there's a fan here for this unit. Um, this fan goes right on top of... The CPU, okay, so the CPU is right here, I mean... Alright, and then remove this screw, so you can, I can show you what's underneath. I see the CPU down there. I'm also curious to find out, I'm guessing the CPU is dedicated, um, it's part of the board. Yeah, it is. It's uh, soldered onto the board. So this is the CPU here. And there's a heat sink, that copper heat sink that goes to this fan. And this fan is uh, its purpose to cooling off the CPU. I guess this is necessary. And um, it's okay to have a spinning fan inside a tablet that I don't mind too much. What I mind is really the hard drive. And what's interesting on the board is that, as I can see, some of the uh, coils and capacitors, they come from the same manufacturer that make iPad uh, components. Well, which will make sense, again, these things are assembled in the same factory as uh, iPad and Foxconn. But uh, what I find interesting is how the design, the engineers use similar parts. I guess this is really no different when you're buying a PC or a Mac, huh? Um, one thing I found, oh, well now I just found it interesting, is these, these gears. It's actually pretty complicated gears and spring for this little foot to be work functional. So that's good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some pictures. Let's see if I have enough battery on my camera to do this. Very good. Some good lighting. I think I may make a school map for this uh, particular model because it looks pretty complicated with a lot of schools. I don't want to remove this piece of plastic though because it's kind of in the way, so I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to remove these FPC connectors. Um, you want to be careful. To find out if the back uh, flip or front flip, these looks like front flip, so I can remove them from the front as such. Just flip them. I don't know if you can see, just flip them this way. Be very, very careful because once you break them, there's really no good way to fix it. You just have to replace. Um, that's a way to fix it, it's just very painful. I don't even want to do it. Alright, this thing is being blocked. 
Okay, so this piece comes right off, this piece of plastic. And I just find my screwdriver. Try not breaking my camera. And there's a screw here. You want to release this, the screw. And then you can access this piece. Of, I guess this. Uh, it has a metal component in it, so it's not just a piece of plastic to block your view. But aside from that, there's a, there's a new main foil in there. So I guess it's there to block your view from um, x-raying the device from outside if I'm not inside. I guess that's what it is. Alright, so here I see an extra slot for the for your, uh, this is for the RAM. This is the memory card slot. So this is where you can upgrade your um, XPS 18 Dell, um, I guess 18.7 inch tablet. This is where you can upgrade your memory. So if you do want to upgrade your memory, this is where you do it. You just slide in the card and push it down. Um, I don't have a DDR3 memory on hand, so I can't really show you how to do this, but it's pretty straightforward. You found a slot right here, you just slide it in and push it down. I would imagine this entire board only one-sided. I don't see anything on the other side. I can tell it's too, not enough space to do it. And now they have pretty much everything is single-sided uh, SMD board. So this is it. This is your entire computer. Um, you have the CPU here. This is i3, Intel i3 processor. And this I'm guessing is the graphic card. Graphic chip. I think it's Intel, um, it's building Intel. It's either the Southern Bridge or the graphic card, I'm not sure actually. But, okay, and, and this is your, this is your um, Wi-Fi, I guess Wi-Fi chip, Wi-Fi connector chip. There's a, a, another chip here, w, WLAN, that's Wi-Fi. And let me zoom in, so you can see. Alright, so this is a Wi-Fi chip, Wi-Fi, whatever you want to call it, chip. And this slot, you can put in another SD card, or, uh, sol sorry, solid state hard drive, like a small one. Or you can put in other cards, like Stewie G's or any other um, attachment. It's basically an uh, expansion slot for upgrades. And more functions. And this is the hard drive, which is pretty easy to take it off. From what I can tell so far, you just take, need to take out these four screws, one, two, three, four, and just pull it that way, it comes right off. And then all you have to do is just transfer the uh, solid state hard drive onto the bracket, the hard drive can caddy, and then put it in. Um, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, I found the USB slot here. I was wonder how on earth did Dell... So what Dell did was like they bought the... The Dell, well, Dell comes with when you buy this XPS 18 model, it comes with a logic tag. See, logic tag with like an engraving of Dell mouse and the keyboard. They work great. These are wireless mouse and they have a two triple A battery and well triple A battery and two double A battery in these. I was wondering where the, the USB connector goes because I don't know if they Bluetooth or wife or the infrared. Um, radio frequency wireless mouse, so like regular wireless mouse from Logitech, right? And I don't know if they have the Bluetooth version. These, now I'm confirmed, they are not Bluetooth. They are regular um, wireless mouse. What's interesting is that you see this little spot, spot right over there, let me zoom in for you. You see that? This, let me take it out. This is a little USB slot. And what's inside the plugging right now, it's a Logitech. Uh, I can't really get this off. Alright, in order to get this off, I will have to take it, you know, take the board off, which is not difficult. You just need to take these two screws. Let me do that now. Actually, yeah, two, two of screws. Okay, I'm just gonna light the screw loose because I don't wanna keep messing with it. And I'm just gonna take this enough to take that Dell Logitech um, mouse receiver off. Because I found it so interesting that they put it inside here, hiding it. So, here, yeah, there we go. Okay, there you go. You see, this is the unifying uh, receiver from Logitech. And that was belonging here, which is inside the 
XPS tablet. So if you do, you don't never open it, you lose the keyboard and the mouse. You pretty much screwed. Unless I'm pretty sure Logitech has some kind of program that you can buy another Logitech keyboard as long as you have this inside the board, then um, you can sync to the computer. I'm not sure how that detail works, but th there you go. If this breaks, somehow your wireless keyboard and mouse doesn't work because there's a little piece of uh, receiver break. It says Dell on it, but it's, it's made of Logitech. Um, then this is where you fix that. You, you find a replacement. So, um, so far I'm pretty impressed by the design of this tablet. It doesn't look like it's ready. It's um, somebody just put it together and they kind of rushed it. Um, it doesn't, it, it's not like, a, it doesn't, how do I say this? The the surface mount component and the circuit board certainly looks like an Apple design. It looks almost like an iPad um, coming out from the same factory and all. But the design is pretty PC. By what, what I mean by that is that it looks um, rushed. It's not, it, it looks like somebody came out with a great idea making a giant tablet, which I love the idea by the way. But they didn't have a lot of time to work on it, so what they did was like they come they come out a bunch of different parts that they already have and just put them together. So this is, looks more like a prototype than a finishing product, in my opinion, which is good because this is a good product. And in the future, in the near future, if this sells well, hopefully it does. Dell and other PC manufacturer would um, or OEM distributor, and they're not really manufacturing it. Uh, they will come out with better, more integrated design um, model preceding um, after these prototype being um, tested. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There's not much to look at. Um, okay, one cool thing. The LED, in this case, this is made in China sticker here. The LED has a gold pin connector. I don't know how many pins that there is, but this is the exact same connector on your MacBook Pro. Yeah, this is the exact same compact competitor. It's made by the company M the Max um I think it's made by Maxell. Molox, sorry. Mol Molox is the manufacturer of these connectors. So this is the exact same thing in your uh MacBook Pro and your MacBook Air. I guess most of the LED connectors. So yeah. So this is the motherboard, that's the board for the LED connector and this is the connector from the board to the logic board. This is your CPU, this is your extra RAM slot, this is your possibly southern bridge or possibly graphic chip. I think it's a graphic card. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a graphic chip. And I don't know what's underneath this fan, um, I think it's the screen, you can see a little bit of barcode under here, this is for the LED screen. There's two huge batteries. And there's a little little port, USB port here that's connecting to the speaker, the right speaker of the tablet and the left speaker of the tablet is two separate. Um, right speaker is of the tablet is on this little USB port that comes with the USB slot for the keyboard and the mouse, which are wireless. They're using radio frequency, not, not Bluetooth. I don't know if this thing actually has Bluetooth. On the box it says it has Bluetooth capability. Unless it's in this chip, I'm guessing the Bluetooth module will go on here. I'm not sure. I haven't tested the Bluetooth on this, but I would imagine it does. Um, yeah, the, this, I'm pretty certain now at this point, these two are for the touch digitizers um, connector. So don't break these. These are kind of pretty important. But these will work, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's a really, um, it doesn't even look like a laptop, does it? It looks like a MacBook Air. So what makes this really heavy, it's the semi-metallic frame here, this whole thing that makes it heavy. I guess it's there to balance out the weight. The battery is the primary weight in this whole thing. It has two of them, which is ginormous. Um, for a tablet, this is like probably three or four times the, the battery weight on iPads. Uh, it's also thicker, it looks like. I'm guessing that's why it's needed for something this big screen, um, it's for the graphics. And there are two speakers, and that's pretty much it. There's not much else inside here, so now I'm gonna take a few more pictures. I'm gonna put 
C with the laptop replacement. Okay, so that will be all, and that was, that was me taking a picture of the board, so I can upload it onto our website. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the hard drive swap. Alright, so today this is the hard drive I'm gonna swap. Um, again, this video is only for demonstration purpose. Normally you really should, um, this is blank hard drive, nothing in it right now. What you should do is you take out this hard drive and clone it with your laptop or whatever and clone the drive into this so since I'm doing simple straw for instruction purpose only I'm just gonna put a blank drive, drive in there and then you can, even if you do put in a blank drive like I'm doing now today you can always upload your own Windows 8 if you have the USB Win Windows 8 drive which I do so that's how you can install Windows 8 onto this tablet once you upgrade the hard drive, but you don't have to do, you can always just, you know, clone your hard drive, providing you have the right uh, software. Okay, so, down to the technical part, there's four screws holding this bracket in place, again, you don't want to lose these screws. The reason I'm taking the picture just now is to make a screw chart for people who want to do this repairs or do this upgrade in the future, this way they won't lose their screws. Um, I would imagine in order to get to the screen, if you need to do anything with the screen, for example, maybe in the future it's possible to replace the screen if you break it, then the screw chart will come in pretty handy because there is considerable amount of screws all over the place on this laptop, uh, all in one tablet. Alright, so four screws on the hard drive candy. So why you want to do this? There's some room here for you to move the hard drive. You want to move it evenly, wiggle, wiggle. And then you just lift this up. You don't want to break these um, solder pads. You want to lift this side up and just pull it out like this. And as you can see, on this, uh, behind the hard drive, there is a little barcode. This is for the LED screen. It's made by, looks like made by Samsung. So it's a Samsung screen, Woo, surprise. Uh, they are, they are type limit by Samsung screen. Um, it has an 18.4 inch FHD. Um, has a model number here in case you're curious. But it's an 18.4 inch um, tablet screen. Okay, so I don't know, do they make 18.4 laptop now? I'm not sure. Is that standard size? Maybe. I look at that. I thought last time I checked was 17, 17 inch uh, laptop. Anyway, so the hard drive caddy. Um, actually, I'm gonna check real quick. There we go. I'll check later. 
Okay, so finally the hard drive caddy has another four screws, one, two, three, four on the side. So you take them out. And again, put these screws somewhere you can find later. You don't want to lose them. I actually don't see where they put um, the RAM. I'm guessing it's somewhere behind here. There's a it's supposed to be a four gig RAM comes with the the tablet on originally. Um, it, it's either that or it was built into the tablet the larger board. I don't see any RAM chip here either, so it's definitely on the other side because I don't see any surface mounted RAM uh, memory chip. Hence it must have a uh, external... Okay, so this caddy is really just a friend, and this is the hard drive, like I say. Uh, it's a very cheap circuit, 500 gigabytes. I'm guessing it costs $20, $30 if you buy this second-handed. That's not, sorry, not sec on a dirt party, not directly from the manufacturer. So, um, yeah, this is pretty crappy. It's 500 gigabytes and it runs at the speed of 5,400 5, RPM, which is as slow as you can get for the standard hard drive for laptops. Cheap. Nobody likes this. No wonder this thing runs a little bit sluggish. Um, that's gonna change when you put in the solid hard drive. So yeah, but before you put it in, you just want to make sure the orientation you have is for is correct. So you want a caddy to go down this way. That means um, you want the drive to go in this way. Oh wait, is it the other way? Yeah, I think it's the other way. Alright, since I don't remember which way this caddy goes because I'm moving it so much. Um, looks like this. Is this right? Yeah, it looks like it's going on this way, and remember that the hard drive, when we first saw it, it was going in, we saw it on the top face, and you want to match it with your solid state hard drive, so these connectors are in the same orientation. You can also look at here, for give you a clue to slide it in this way. Now I just want to make sure this caddy is also um, going the right direction. Alrighty. So now you want to put the four screws onto this hot drive caddy. Just my screwdriver is not magnetized, but for this repair, it would really help if I have a magnetized screwdriver because the screw doesn't get picked up easily. Otherwise, fortunately, I don't have a magnet with me. It's kind of hard to do this with a uh, with under the camera because I'm running a risk of dropping the screw, and once I drop it, it's like oh my god! Then I, it's like no way to find it because it's gonna go very far. I'm um, in a funny angle right now, so I'm gonna try to do this um, as much accuracy as I can. There we go. Alright, so what I did now here was, um, hold on, Let's sit down for a sec. What I did now is I screwed it on the opposite side. This is how you always want to screw things on, that way you don't get any kink, uh, funny angles. And you don't, you don't mess up the frame too badly and the sec, the third and the fourth screw will have a difficult time to screw it on. If you do this orientation, we don't have a problem. Have a last chance of screwing up. You won't twist the friend basically. Okay. It's pretty hard to do this with cameras. I only imagine you could do this repair now with my videos. You know, once you watch it once, you could do this probably under um, possibly two minutes. Because taking out the top screw, the ten screws, and then take off you know a screw in total and change the hard drive. That's pretty much 10 minutes of your time. Oh, sorry, 2 minutes of your time if you do it really fast. Okay, so I think I um, might have messed it out here a little bit. some reason... No, no, I'm good, I'm still good. Okay, so that's it. You slide it in, voila! Done! 
Now I just need to put all the screws back. Or if you don't want to put it back, that's fine too. It's your, it's your tablet, it's up to you. Doesn't really matter because everything's gonna be sandwiching anyway. Oh god, I wish I have a magnet. I can find. Oh yeah, I have a magnet in my hard drives. I should do that. So open the hard drive and get magnetized. Yeah. Let's see now. There we go. Easy peasy. You don't want to screw these screw on too tightly, just in case you're gonna have to, you know, remove them later. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the solid state hard drive from Toshiba, 255 gigabytes of space. I bought it for 200, I guess 230 dollars when it's on sale. I'm um, pretty sure they'll charge you 500 or 800 dollars for like an upgrade to a solid state hard drive from the uh, crappy Sega spinning drive. Um, so I saved like essentially 300 to 400 dollars, possibly more, simply just doing two minutes of my time. One. 10 minutes because I'm making this video, but 2 minutes on my time if you do it this uh, on your own after watching this video. Alright, just remember um, to put these back and it's up to you if you want to put the piece of plastic that I took out back. Here we go. The piece of plastic. It's up to you if you want to put this back because I don't find it very important. This piece of black thing serves some function by blocking the statistic discharge from the um, motherboard, but since your back case is made of like semi metal material, uh, it's really plastic but it's metal like, it should be okay. I wonder if I have the right orientation for this. See, this is why I don't like to deal with plastics. They're unnecessary and then they waste my time. Right? Because this thing's supposed to go this way, I think. There we go. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Technically, I didn't really need to take these off when you do the uh, hard drive repair. You don't even need to un un uh, unclip these uh, digitizer connector either. I did only that so you can see what's underneath. And this looks like it's the microphone. Actually, no, this is a vibrating device. Uh, similar thing you found in iPhone. So this tablet vibrates, by the way. That's where it vibrates. Ah, there we go. Oh, no, no, no. I don't have a screw. I'm gonna try this. Maybe it's magnetized. There we go. So this screwdriver is magnetized. But then it's too small. I don't know if I can use it. Yep, too small. Uh, so hard to use. 
This is uh, my iPhone screwdriver. But these screws are way too big for um, Philip triple zero screwdriver. All right, so putting these back, you want to be careful. Again, you want these all this uh, PC flip to be up. They looks like um, I guess thirty or forty ish, thirty five maybe connectors. Don't call me on that because I can't really tell. I don't continue. So we just put them in gently, gently. This thing really sucks when they break, and they're so fragile. So we wanna just be very gentle and clip them down. Always do that in the center. Don't do that on the side. And you so now, don't use any tool for this. Very bad thing to do is tools. You lose all the tactile sensation you can feedback you can get from using old fingers. Use tools. So you end up breaking. Alright. Flip it back very gently. This one's not exactly in the right location I want it. Okay, there we go. Perfect. This way your touch screen will work. Otherwise it wouldn't. Alright. Another piece of plastic, I really think we can live without, but what the hell. Let's put it back. Okay, so putting it back, remember your 10 screws you took it out earlier? Just slide this thing in. There's no uh, click or anything. It just it should lay on directly on the belt. Before you do that, you want to just review everything you did. Everything is in the right place. You didn't miss anything. I didn't miss anything. And just slide this back cover back. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from top, and then move to the bottom. I'm using the wrong screwdriver, see I'm just yeah, not paying attention. Uh, you want a hexagon screwdriver, so there we go. Hex start. And that was the foot. Oh, that wasn't working. I actually kind of like the hexagon screwdriver because they so uh, the screwdriver for is so um, readily available and these screws are very difficult for you to break them. You know, like um, you can pretty much do them with a machine or like a automatic screwdriver. Unlike the Phillips, they don't really get um, worn out from screwing with your hand or using machine. So they get a lot, a lot of good traction when you do the scoop. Okay. There you go. How many more to go? Three more? Four more? Four more screws. Always want to do the corners first.
Alright, so this is what you want to do with the corner screws. You want to push the case down before you screw all the way down, like like such. Push it down and screw it. And otherwise, it's gonna bounce back, and that's not what you want. Just loosen the screw and push the case all the way down. Yeah, like that. Okay, and the way you tell if you did a good job is when you can move this foot down. Otherwise, the spring will let this foot continue to be up. So uh, if you do a good job on screwing it down, this foot wouldn't be constantly up. Otherwise, you guys have a trouble there. Okay. And this is how you do upgrade on your new Dell XPS. Um, Computer. Uh, by the way, doing this, in theory, it will avoid your warranty. But if you do a very careful job and you're not causing any internal damage or external damage to the casing or any of these screws here, it will not avoid your warranty because there's simply no way to tell if you did open it or not. I'm guessing it will avoid the one tier. I actually don't know what the Dell policy on this is because this technically is really just a piece of like cover. So it's just a piece of cover. Okay, so anyways, um, that'll be all.